We do have a caller on the line now that I'm excited to talk to again. Yeah. Let's talk with Torben in Arizona. Hi, Torben. Hello. Hi, can you hear us? Hi. I can. And in fact, I don't know if you can tell my voice is, I've got puberty voice right now. Um, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. That's actually really exciting, man. Yeah. Yeah, also happy birthday to V. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what are you calling about today, Torben? Yeah, um, so a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a call about vaccine hesitancy. Yeah. And um, I've, I've been uh, on a rotation uh, in medical school on internal medicine. And so I've been in the ICU uh, and on the floor seeing a lot of patients. And I had the honor of attending a journal club with a bunch of the attending physicians at this hospital. And for people who don't know what a journal club is, um, it's where you have a bunch of doctors in a room. They bring up articles, uh, research about like current medical things, and then they all essentially debate how to use this information in practice to make everything better. Mm -hmm. And I just learned some lessons about uh, the current situation, and um, it's kind of mind-blowing, uh, the perspective that I've learned about, about all of it. Yeah. Interesting. You want to share the Cliff Notes version with us? Yeah. Um, so medicine is very dynamic. Um, I feel like a lot of people, when they think about um, becoming sick and going to the hospital, that they're just going to get some medicine and be sent on their way, like they'll just get better and go. Um, that's not at all how this works. So when we're treating somebody, especially somebody who's very, very sick in the ICU, um, there's a lot of things you can do, but everything that you alter, you are messing something else up in the process. And one of these decisions uh, we, that we have to make for you is, um, do you get to breathe or do you get to eat? Uh, because oh, gosh. you basically get to choose one or the other. Mm. So, and I can explain why this happens. Um, so if you're on high flow oxygen because your lungs aren't working very well, um, you're at high risk for aspirating. So if you were to eat something, you're very high risk of choking on it. And then if you do that, you can get a bacterial infection on top of the viral infection you already have. Mm. So they've just been deciding to make people NPO so they can't eat anything. Because even if you gave someone a tube to feed them, you still have risk of aspirating. So they just decided don't, don't feed them. Um, but then the debate comes up. Do we feed you through your IV, like peripherally? And we can't do that either because you're a uh, hypercoagulable so if we give you food in your IV, you're probably going to throw a blood clot and mm. you might die. Jeez. So this sounds like um, there's, but, there's yeah. a good reason to try and avoid needing to be on a ventilator. Yeah. Yeah. And even they're starting to have these conversations now um, where how early do we talk to people about their DNR status or their like what... Um, resuscitation efforts they want they're saying that we should start talking to people about this as soon as they hit the emergency department wow damn because is that because things take as uh, like quick turns and there might not be time later yeah yeah um if they're, they're saying that if you spend about 10 days in the icu or in critical care uh if we can't like fix you within 10 days there's like almost no chance that you're gonna make it through wow that's intense. So, yeah. Torben, um, I see you're talking, you, you want to talk specifically around like vaccine hesitancy here. And, and I know that I probably know where you're going with this. Um, can you can you draw that that line for us? Connect those dots? Yeah. Um, for people who are scared of the vaccine, you really shouldn't be. And again, we're not talking about people who have a reason not to get it. But for real, if you're thinking that going to the hospital and getting medication and all this is a safer option than just getting a vaccine, you're absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. Like these debates are happening all the time of how we're going to treat you, what we're going to do about it. And it's very risky. No matter what we do, it's very, very risky. So I think you should get a vaccine. Like that's way like it's the lesser of two evils for sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> Even if you want to frame it in that way, like maybe maybe you don't trust the vaccine. Maybe you are worried about side effects. If you weight the 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 concerns around both, um, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, yeah, I mean. I, I Honestly, I'm just kind of taken aback personally. Um, I'm listening, but at the same time, I about a week and a half ago, I lost my uncle to yeah. COVID. Um, and having seen the pushback against getting vaccinated, um, there are a couple of things that I don't think people are getting. And just just to be super, super clear, Torben, can I ask you a, a couple basic questions about the vaccine? Maybe you can help at least clear up a few yeah. of these. Okay. Are there yeah. microchips in the vaccine? Maybe no. like little nanobots that track you? <laughs> No. Are you sure? Not. Yeah, I'm pretty positive on that. Okay, okay. Um, what about like, uh, is, is it made entirely of baby fetus or only partially? No. Of fetus? No. No? Just Any of partially. it? Just, Just part <laughs> no, 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 no baby fetus. Are no. you sure? No. Because that seems to be a thing that's going yeah. around that people don't freaking seem to understand. Are you sure? Or we're not we're not killing yeah, babies. I'm, I'm pretty, okay. Pretty sure. Okay. 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 Uh, do you get it directly from the Bill Gates Foundation, <laughs> or no. is there like a supplier between <laughs> you and the Bill Gates Foundation? <laughs> no. 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 We don't. Okay. We don't get it uh, so, 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 do you visibly see the mark of the beast after you're vaccinated, like six 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 on your arm, or does it show up <laughs> elsewhere? How does that work? It depends. It depends on how many shrooms you do first. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, th th this idea that there's a mark of the beast or something, for some reason, it, th th that's something that it is so on its face stupid. And there are so many people who go, oh, well, that's just like your personal view of the world. And, you know, I really don't want to interact or or, or, or be bothered to tell you that, hey, what you're believing, what you're espousing is not just stupid it is incredibly stupid but it's also dangerous so incredibly it, it, you know it's it's also damaging or potentially damaging for other people around you and that makes it incredibly selfish uh so for those yeah. of you who are watching who uh can get vaccinated and are choosing not to uh you should call in and give us a good reason why because if you have the ability to get vaccinated and you don't, we want to talk to you. Yeah. Let's not just let's not just hammer at a straw man. Maybe somebody can call in and tell me a good reason why they're choosing not to get vaccinated when they can. Also, I know I noticed yeah. some people are talking. Well, the people who are deny like anti vaxxers don't watch this show, and you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I guarantee you, at least some of the people watching this show oh, yeah. are but also it the reason that we do this show across the board not just with this topic is to give you guys talking points for when you have these conversations in your real life right because we're not going to be able to interact with everybody but hopefully the goal is to promote a way of talking about these things that's actually helpful and useful having awesome people like Torben call in with his medical expertise absolutely um, will hopefully help you take this information to somebody in your life who might be anti-vax and and just if we're worried about this getting out to people especially when you're if you're watching this live or if you're seeing this as a clip throughout the week hit that thumbs up button uh, you know, like, subscribe, share this video out. That's what the algorithm looks for to promote it, to get it in front of more eyeballs. And so that helps. It's a way that you don't have to, you know, talk to your family about it, but potentially help in the long run. Yeah. Um, Torben. And can I, can yeah. I share a point before I go? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So one last thing. Um, I know you've all been hearing ad nauseum about how uh, the ICUs are being full. And uh, I'm sure it's, it's not very tangible to most people like what that means. Um, but there's a, a big difference between having a bed in the ICU versus having a bed on the floor. Uh, so in the ICU, the doors and the walls are like, they're clear. So uh, you can be seen, you can easily be monitored. The nurse's station is very close by. Doctors are very close. So if something were to happen in the ICU, uh, if you were to go into cardiac arrest, people can get there. Their response time is pretty good. Mm -hmm. You have a good chance of survival. Um, 
but let's say the ICU is full. We have to move critical patients onto the floor. We don't have clear doors or walls. No one can see you. You're behind like a wooden barrier. Mm -hmm. um, the nurses are farther away. There's more patients per nurse, uh, more patients per doctor. So you're not uh, as likely to get a rapid response if you were to code on the floor. So it is a life-saving thing to have ICU beds available. And so let's imagine if you, even if you weren't in for um, a certain viral infection, if you had some other issue, like if you had a heart attack and you coded on the floor, um, but you should have been in the ICU, you might not make it. Yeah. And that's reality. So I did want to pass that on as well. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a, um, there was a person I, I follow online whose wife has stage four cancer and she could not get the recommended amount of treatment for her cancer. They had to send her home because they needed all the, the resources and staff and, and beds for people with COVID. So this is something that is like the, the fact that people are not more freaked out about that particular part of it, like leaving COVID and, and its seriousness aside, the fact that there there are no resources for people regardless of what that issue might be is terrifying. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we actually had a uh, uh, someone in the live chat uh, put something relevant. They said, uh, I've been a nurse for 30 years. I work in a facility with a COVID-19 unit. Get vaccinated. In 16 months, over 40 deaths from COVID, zero from the flu. I'm assuming that that's talking about their hospital specifically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 40 deaths from COVID, zero from the flu. Yes, this is just this one example. Uh, but if somebody says it's just the flu, um, uh, that's that's a statistic. Oh, oh, one one other thing, Torben. Yep. What's with the cow dewormer? Oh God, yeah. Should we all be ingesting ivermectin? No. Oh my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I mean, what are people getting out of it? Why? Why do? Why do they think they're doing? Like, like what? What the hell is going on? I have no clue. And, <laughs> and honestly, like any of these treatments, even even if we found something that would help manage you in the hospital, like it's it's way more dynamic. Like I was saying, it's going to throw other things into a weird balance and and so just don't do it like we have <laughs> the easiest the easiest method available to avoid all this and that's just don't get covid and there's a vaccine that will help you not get covid yeah definitely um th there's also a video uh that i helped holy kool-aid with a few weeks ago mm -hmm. that goes over that those statistics um and so if people want to check that out as well i think that could be a good resource absolutely We'll link that in the description for this clip for sure. Okay. Awesome. Torben, thank you so much for calling in. I personally love when you call in with this kind of stuff because we 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 want to talk about, you know, the traditional call-in show topics, but there is so much more that we should be focusing on, especially right now. This is prescient. This is important. And I really appreciate you calling in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Did you know that Jordan Peterson is flirting with the idea that maybe ivermectin isn't as bad as uh, other, like the scientists I, say? I, honestly, it just, it blows my mind. It um, doesn't blow my mind. I like, saw that today. I was like, this is the least surprising thing I have seen on Twitter in a long time. I, I've honestly needed to step back because after my uncle died, I've been so angry. Yeah. And unable to calm down for a lot. It, it's it's so I've just needed to kind of step away simply because it's it's gotten into my dreams, you know. It's, yeah. It's just not great. 